what I learned in psychiatry was that what I had been taught in training programs to be a psychiatrist, which is basically learning to understand the processes in people's heads. Uh, what I learned very quickly was that that was useful for individual psychotherapy, which was in turn useful for people with neurotic illnesses. You start dealing with major mental illness psychotherapy and uh, individual psychotherapy was not very useful. In fact, in many cases, quite useless. That you had to learn about the real life, social and environmental context of illness. So I spent a lot of time, uh, I was, because I got curious about this, I, be, I became head of the crisis division of the Fort Logan Mental Health Center which is a major community-based state hospital system for Colorado in, in, in Denver. And when people came in through the crisis unit to be evaluated for admission, we put them right in the car and went right back out to their workplace or their family setting to learn about what was going on there. And that was profound. So I, 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 introduced a whole thing called social systems intervention where I taught mental health professionals around the world to go to the real life space and learn about the social and environmental forces pertinent to the development of symptoms of illness but also to the social process involved in hospitalization. And uh, that ended up after checking this out with hundreds of people, taking them, going with them to their real life setting, both in Scotland, I worked in a, in, at Dingleton Hospital with Maxwell Jones, and in Denver. The basic thing is that two thirds of the reason people get admitted to the to psychiatric hospitals is social forces. And when we started looking at environmental forces, that was poverty. That was the biggest life space issue. People who are chronically mentally ill, what happens to them in their careers and their degree of happiness and dependency is very much related to poverty variables. So we started doing poverty stuff. We started working on housing, work, self-respect, uh, issues for the chronically mentally ill. That was one of the things that got me curious about how you deal with poverty or what, what the characteristic, characteristics of poverty are in very poor countries. Because the poor people I was dealing with in Denver were after all making, uh, uh, living on $600 a month. That made them fabulously wealthy in a world scale. So part of my interest in learning about poverty in Bangladesh was to find out how this was relevant to the lives of people living on a dollar a day. 